like you said. I thought you might like that. I'm proud of you. You're so grown up. I'm getting baptized on Sunday. Are you ready to be baptized? I'm trying to be good. And I, I say my prayers every day. Well, almost every day. Did you get baptized? Many years ago, I was among the first. I was only 13 years old when I first read the Book of Mormon. I borrowed a copy from Papa's friend and read all night. Hey, Lizzie. How you doing? What? What's this? Would you get me more flour, please? Hello, Johnny. Steve. Joseph Smith, welcome to my home. I never imagined Brothers I would Jacob, actually meet Pauline. the man they called the prophet. So but it was a moment I would never forget. Hello, Eliza. I'm Joseph Smith. It would seem, Brother Morley, that your missing Book of Mormon is not missing after all. I would like you to keep it. I shall give Brother Morley another. The Lord has called us to a great and marvelous work, to establish Zion, a land of promise. It was there I first heard the prophet Joseph speak of a place called Zion, the New Jerusalem a city where we would build our temple and live in peace and be of one mind. I wanted to be a part of Zion with all my young girl heart. You're not taking your chair? We never did get it fixed. I said I'd fix it. Well, there's no time now. Well, why would God command us to leave? To find peace in our new faith. Well, it's not my faith. Please, change your mind. You Go don't even know where us. you're going. We're going to Zion. You don't even know what that means. You're a fool. I'll have none of that. You've never tried to understand any of this. Johnny? 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 I believe this to be the true gospel of Jesus Christ. God is the author. It was by him we received the Book of Mormon. And it is through his prophet's voice that we are called to go. Well, I don't believe in Joseph Smith. And I think you're a fool, too. I never expected to see my brother again. I never knew how much I loved Johnny until I watched him run away. We followed Joseph Smith to Ohio and on to the far western edge of the frontier to a young Missouri town called Independence to be gathered as a righteous people unto the Lord. That's what the prophet had said. And so to us, Independence was more than the edge of the wilderness. It was the place we would build our home and establish our promised city of Zion. Have a good ride. Come here. Give me a hand with this. Mormons arrived nothing Missouri. Now they number 1,200. They are superstitious and opposed to slavery. And how about that Joe Smith speaking to God and his angels? It's blasphemy. He knows 
time, you will have a Mormon sheriff. And Mormon judges. We propose this declaration. No Mormon shall move and settle in this county. Their leaders shall prevent any further immigration of their distant brethren. The Mormon printing office shall be closed. For three years, we tried every lawful means to get our lands again and wearied God with our appeals for justice, but to no avail. The citizens of Clay County treated us with kindness, but in the end, they asked us to move on. This time, Mama did not go with us. We started over once again, but at last, our endless petition to the government was heard. They appointed Caldwell County for the settlement of the Latter-day Saints. My son, Johnny. Hello, Papa. I'm sorry about Mama. Come too late. I didn't know. I hope he can forgive me. I'll need some time. Yes, sir. <laughs> I can't believe how grown up you are. Gun so big, I've hardly recognized you. Come, I want you to meet my friend, Sister Catherine. This is my brother, Johnny. My dear, dear brother, Johnny. How do you do? Oh, Johnny. I'll finish it for you now. <laughs> no, finish it for Mama. The Lord said the gospel would be proclaimed by the weak and simple. This surely proves it. You make a fine missionary, Papa. I'll do whatever the Lord asks me to do. I've asked Jacob to look after you. Then we'll be all right.
stubborn and unforgiving. I'm sorry. Now, don't just up and join the Mormon church because of a pretty face. Yes, Papa. Goodbye, Papa. in a mysterious way. But watching Papa go, I could never have imagined the way his mission would change my life. I myself have looked for the truth for many years. There are many who are kept from the truth only because they know not where to find it. How can you claim to know the truth? He is called a prophet. A Moses in our day. False prophets in sheep's clothing. Uh, Ravenous <laughs> wolves. And Matthew also says, ye shall know them by their fruits. Right. Here is the fruit. An ancient record confirming what every Christian heart yearns to know for certain. That Jesus is the Christ. The very Son of God. May one buy your book, preacher. Oh, of course. Just for the price of printing. Five pennies. Oh, I am short the price. You may owe what's left. A man's soul should be worth a farthing. doctrine, not their manner, which attracts me. Well, they believe in the Bible, as we do, but they have another book, another testament to the Lord. Here, have you seen this? And when you have received these things, ask God, eternal Father, in the name of Christ, whether these things are not true. And did you ask God, David? I feel as if I should join myself with them. The faithful have looked a long time for a renewal of the ancient faith, David. Perhaps the time has come. I believe God can speak to men. If your heart tells you it is his true church, then maybe he is speaking to you. On Sunday last, 17 souls joined themselves to the body of the saints by baptism. Among them is a fine man named David Walker, whom the Spirit of the Lord has truly touched. I love you all. If trouble continues, remember there must be opposition in all things that righteousness be brought to pass. The peace and good cheer of our home in Far West did not last. The harassment from the mobs had come again. Revenge is not the Lord's way, but some of the brethren were determined we not be driven out again. My brother Johnny was among them. The rumor is unconfirmed, Major, but I have heard those Mormons are raising an army against us. Take this to General Clark at Far West. He is to proceed with all possible speed. The Mormons must be treated as enemies. They must be driven from the state. Or, if necessary, 
exterminated. Daddy! The trouble with our neighbors did not end, but we learned to endure, and the Lord poured out his blessings in return. Johnny married Catherine and settled on a creek near the city of Far West at a place we called Hans Mill. Our precious city of Far West was in ruins. An army of mobbers had entered our homes, stolen our possessions, taken our property at the point of bayonets, and violated that which was most precious. This treaty provides that you leave the state forthwith. You can expect no mercy. I will ensure that the governor's orders are carried out. As for your leader, you will never see them again. We were beaten. We traveled back the way we had come and took refuge in a sick, infested swamp on the Mississippi. Our leaders said it was to gain our strength and go west again to build our city of Zion. But I did not believe them. Eliza. Johnny had faith and he's dead. Joseph had faith and he's in prison. I believed in Zion and there's no such place. If God loves us so much, why has he abandoned us? We'll find Zion. We will. I don't believe it anymore. I've been released from prison. You look quite like a...
the way I feel. Do you have faith to be healed? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Is there no end to the suffering? The Lord suffered all things for us. Our days are known, and our years shall not be numbered less. If the very jaws of hell gape open after us, it shall be for our good. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I do. I do. But is he truly mindful of us? Eliza Williams, in the name of Jesus Christ, arise and be made whole. The Lord does love us. He chastens us to teach us obedience and faith. Zion cannot be built without these principles. It is our own weakness that keeps us from her. Yet even so, we shall begin again to raise a city. The Lord has already begun to sweep the earth and gather his elect to help us. be in your debt, John. Welcome aboard, lad. Truly, Joseph Smith was a prophet of God. Within three years, our beautiful city of Nauvoo rose like a miracle from the dreary swamps of commerce. It became the largest city in the state of Illinois. laid in honor of the great God. May it there remain until the whole fabric is completed, that the saints may have a place to worship God and the Son of Man, our beloved Savior and Redeemer, have where to lay his head. Where's Daniel? He's off to work on the river. He's he's with a good captain. I mean, sure. How could I ever thank you, Jacob? I have more thanks than I deserve. Eliza has consented to be married. Papa. Oh, I'm so sorry. This is David Walker, Eliza, Mary, Catherine, and Jacob. You have a fine eye for beauty, sir.
Excuse me, sir. Uh, my name's David Walker. I'm Joseph Smith, Jr. Right. Well, of course, I know who you are. You're the prophet. I'm only a man, Mr. Walker, sent to preach the gospel. I, I was baptized by John Williams in England. Well, I arrived first this morning. Splendid spectacle it was. Then it is Brother David. Welcome to Nauvoo. It is a high honor. What may I call you? Oh, I've been called just about everything. <laughs> Brother Joseph suits me fine. Brother Joseph, then. It's a grand time to be on Earth, David. It's the fullness of times. Tell me what you want me to do. Help build a temple here on this very spot where we may worship God according to the powers of the holy priesthood. Help us do that, David. If ever a people were inspired by a vision and united in a common purpose, it was those of us who were called to build the temple in Nauvoo. Holiness to the Lord. Brother Jacob, I have your lunch whenever you're ready. You're a man of obvious good fortune, Brother Jacob. <laughs> How are dishes stay so pretty? Flattering words are a devil's trick, Brother Walker. Ah, but truth is not flattering. Jacob said you're working on the temple one day in five, twice the one in ten Brother Joseph has asked. Jacob exaggerates. Jacob is precise in the truth. I confess. I feel driven to finish it. Well, the temple will bring us blessings we don't even understand. Jacob is waiting till it's finished so he can marry Eliza there. Well, perhaps I will slow down and work just one day in ten. Shall we have a challenge on the cross, Scott? Aye. Elder John. No, are you quite able with your hands? Shall we have a small wager? I avoid intemperate habits when I can, Brother David. Of course. Uh, well, a prize then for the winner between us. First turn with Eliza at the dance. Brother Hiram. Ready. Your work in the sunstone for the temple is exquisite. I started cutting stone when I was only 12. I cut stone much better than I dance, I'm afraid. <laughs> you did fine. No, I have two left feet. <laughs> is your foot all right? <laughs> I told you it's fine. I would like to call on you again. No. No, no. 
We mustn't even discuss it. Eliza, I would have you for my wife. <laughs> you remind me of Johnny. Well, I, I... I have little to offer, but... These hands. My faith in the Lord. And a promise to cherish you with all my heart. And I will make you laugh. Be dear friends. I'm sworn to Jacob. But I don't think you loved Jacob. He was like a father to me when I had no one. Ooh. Well, Jacob was like a father to everyone. Don't speak ill of him. He's the kindest man I know. Marriage is a grand reward for kindness. But love is kindness. It's unselfish. It's long-suffering. It endureth all things. It. Jacob's waiting. You were worried. I'm I'm fine. I'll be right in. With the pain, the suffering, and the patience, God also allows us joy. That feeling between brethren is not pleasing to the Lord, Brother Walker. I hold none for you. And I none for you. Well, if I've offended you, Jacob, I'm sorry. Truly, I am. I am, of course, not unaware of your interest in Sister Williams. I've spoken with her and suggested that she consider her feelings and choose between us. Every day. I bless you with long life and prosperity. Amen. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Mama, what'll 
liked you, David Walker. You're laughing. I, like Paul, have been imperiled. I should be like a fish out of water if I were out of persecution. <laughs> But their persecutions are vain, their accusations false. In all things, we seek to do the will of the Lord. It is his church. After the many, many testimonies which have been given of Jesus Christ, this is the testimony, last of all, which I give of him. That he lives, for I have seen him, even on the right hand of God, and I have heard the voice bearing record that he is the only begotten of the Father. He was a remarkable man, Peter. The people never really understood us. The church wasn't about Joseph Smith. It's the church of Jesus Christ. Oh, Latter-day Saint. Father Joseph's testimony of the Lord was the last thing I ever heard him say. They killed him! Joseph Smith has been murdered at the Carthage jail! The prophet's dead. I was not prepared for how it would end. It hasn't ended. It only ends if we lose faith. He held an army at his command, yet he allowed himself to be taken. His vision exceeded ours. You know what he asked us to do. We must go on and do it. We'll be driven from Nauvoo. You must finish the temple. Why didn't God protect him? Maybe his work was finished. But ours has only begun. There's no end. How can you have such faith? I learned for myself the Lord loves us. He will not abandon us. But we must not abandon him. With the death of the prophet Joseph, old enemies appeared and tried to drive us out. In truth, we would never leave until we finished our temple as we were determined to be endowed with the ordinances of the Lord. The time of the Exodus had come. We turned our faces west to our great and unknown journey to a new land west of the great rivers to where we would plow and plant and build the kingdom anew. The call of Zion was in our ears, but the memory of Nauvoo was in our hearts.
There's a war with Mexico. The army's come asking for 500 volunteers to march with General Kirby against Santa Fe. <laughs> I'll miss you. After tribulations cometh the blessings. Is there an end to tribulation? Perhaps only in the world to come. If there was there any other way? I know. I understand. Thine afflictions shall be but a small moment. And if thou endure it well, God shall exalt thee on high. I love you. Babe, we'll be all right. Go in faith. We shall be well enough off. You have to take care of Mama and Sarah. You have to be a man now. Take care of this too, hmm? We've one more temple yet to build. Whatever happens, you remember your father loved you. Hmm? It may be in Zion when we meet again. If we ever meet again, it'll be Zion to me. It was too late to go on to the Rocky Mountains. We camped at the Missouri. The winter of 1846 was a dark memory I do not wish to remember, in a place I shall never forget. the advance party early in the spring of 1847. I had not heard from David, but my faith did not allow me to wonder if I would ever see him again. We could wait till next spring. David should be back by then. We're going with Elder Pratt now. Confounded Liza, you know I'm no better than baggage with my lame leg. Then we'll cart you along as baggage. Our nations, Liza. If you're so set on going with Polly, then I'll stay back here. <sighs> God has not brought you over so many years and so many miles to leave you at the edge of the wilderness. Mama wouldn't let you stop. Neither will I. I'm not able on my own. Then I will carry you on my back. I'll drag you behind an ox if I have to. But I'll not leave you behind, and I'm not going to stay another day in this miserable place. Who raised you anyway? Papa, it's so close. I can feel it. Zion is waiting. Let's help God keep his promise.
given your best, but it isn't enough. I've hauled my family 500 miles across the wilderness. I've done whatever I had to do. I can't pull the wagon. Oh. Dear God, I know you've blessed my family and are surely weary of my endless prayers. You healed me. I know you can heal this up. entered the Salt Lake Valley in the summer of 1847. That little boy was your father. And, and they, they got, got to build, build their temple. They worked side by side until the day my David died. Please tell me my book. This is the book I told you about. The prophet Joseph Smith himself gave it to me. I want you to have it. and make sure that this legacy of faith may never die.